so there you go that was hooked on a feeling uh, from guardians of the galaxy and the reservoir dogs soundtracks and you're joining us back for the midweek movie show i'm joined by david ahmad uh, and we've been talking about uh, the phantom of the open uh, your new film that's, that's coming out uh, very soon in november the 5th and uh, just tell us about this is, is this the first big screen premiere that you've you've had to attend i love the way had to attend you know as if you know as your arm twisted to go to this premiere yeah, so the we had the world premiere um, last Tuesday night at the Royal Festival Hall in London as part of the um, BFI London Film Festival, um, which was incredibly exciting. And um, um, I was there, uh, obviously. <laughs> and uh, yeah, actually, it was a really nice turnout. Uh, Mark was there and Craig, the director, and several other members of the cast. Um, his uh, twin sons were there um, and the writer uh, Simon Farnaby was also there who lots of people might um, know of his other big film that he wrote which is Paddington 2. Oh I see yes and uh, well Simon Farnaby of course is uh, somebody else you've worked with uh, and we'll we'll uh, um, we'll <laughs> come back we'll, we'll yes. come back come back to that when we start talking about small screen work as well yeah um now so you know this uh, the, it, and it was quite nice i've seen the, the pictures uh, no red carpet uh, for you because it's golf so they went with a green carpet which is quite that's nice. right yeah yeah nice it's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah yes i mean uh I, I i wasn't disappointed not to have walked down a red carpet no <laughs> um no and they they <laughs> and they'd set up little areas where you could stop and have your photo taken with the, you know, as if they were golf, golf pins. Excellent. Uh, uh, and uh, how does this work? Does it, so is that the first time you've seen the full film or? or, or... It, it, it was. Yeah. So, um, so what normally happens with these things is that uh, uh, after the film is finished, after it's all been edited together, um, they often, put together a, a cast and crew screening mm. of a movie, which is often the first time that you get to see the movie. And this is before, you know, it, 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 it comes out. Um, but that hasn't happened yet because it's not out till November. So this was the first, literally the first public screening of the movie. Um, so I hadn't seen it. I had no idea what to expect, apart from what I'd seen in the trailer, which was very encouraging. <laughs> well, yes, I, I'm assuming it's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it's a lovely movie <laughs> it's a really fun movie it's heartwarming uh, very moving mm. um it's and it's really nicely observed it's beautifully performed um it, uh, very unusually we filmed on 35 millimeter yeah so it wasn't on digital uh, and i think it really lends something to to, to the movie uh, uh, you know, a, a nostalgic feel, as, as it were. I was going to say that's going to set it very much in that that kind of seventies feel that you would have been going for for the, mm, for the yeah, film, which is yeah lovely. Now you you mentioned we, we mentioned the kind of small screen work you've been you've been a working actor now for uh, as as long as I've been uh, jumping around in front of audiences myself. Uh, now this you've worked in a vast array of, of fringe theatre touring productions massive huge shows uh, places you know locally you know places like the Lowry that you know you performed in front of mm. crowds of, of hundreds and thousands at a time um you've worked in television you've worked you know you've done the jobbing working in I kept seeing you popping up in adverts left right and center um <laughs> yeah. man putting his hand out for a car at some point or other or serving you something in Burger King um yeah, it's exactly. um uh, you know how... other 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 fast food restaurants are available did I was going to say you've not done the Golden Arches one yet? I'll I'll expect to see you on uh, on one of those at some point or another. Yeah. Um, but it's I mean, how does this compare? Is it is it very much in the same way that you go from, you know, fringe theatre to a big huge touring production? Is it the same working in small screen and and on the big screen? Are, are the experiences different? Well, each um, yeah, I mean they are they they very much are. Um, I, I mean, most of my work has been stage. Uh, up until this point but I'm lucky enough to have done a, a, a few films and some telly as well and lots of adverts which is obviously also behind the camera and each thing each thing has its own um, uh, requirements basically to get to for the, for the performance um, obviously on stage you're working with a live audience there's always that backwards and forwards you know feeling off the energy of the audience uh, you know they inform how you perform on stage 
and obviously physically and vocally it's a completely different performance uh yeah and if you're in a fringe theater you know if you're above a pub performing to 30 people then obviously um it's going to be slightly different different physicality than if you're performing to 3000 people at the uh, the palace yeah. in manchester um uh, so yeah that that that's different and also of course on film um uh, you you're not there for very long yeah you don't get rehearsal time you know so you're kind of working it out on your own mm. and you turn up to a set where it depending on what you're doing you know if you're only there for one day you, you, you have to make friends with everybody in one <laughs> day you feel a little bit out of place and then suddenly you're thrown into it right go let's do it you, you get a brief chat with the director and then you're in so you have to have done your homework, really, you know, coming into a, a, a film or, or, or a TV show like that. Um, and, it, and in terms of uh, TV, we'd have seen you recently. Uh, the new series of Ghosts has just come out. It's just been on, on the BBC. Um, yeah, you were, right, yeah. You were a conspirator. You were, you were playing a nasty guy there. What's going on? You know, this is... Well, I don't know if he was nasty. I mean, he just believed in the idea that uh, Queen Elizabeth I shouldn't be on the throne; it should be a sister. Oh, um, I see. right, yeah. So that you know, uh, you know, the, the toppling the monarchy is uh, just a, a regular thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't those days. Um, <laughs> he, uh, yes, yeah. That was lovely, actually. That was again, what a what a delight to work on that set. And I was in for a few days on that, um, which is great because you go back in for the second day and you know everyone. Yeah, and and you don't have to sort of like break down those barriers. You've already met everybody, and it was a really fun set. Um, and so it was quite nice at the premiere. So Simon um, Farnaby is in Ghosts as well, um, and my friend Jim uh, is also in Ghosts. He plays Pat, the uh, uh, the Scoutmaster, mm -hmm. um, and we were sharing a trailer filming Ghosts, and he told me that Simon had been talking about the movie and that he'd seen the trailer and I was in it, which I obviously have no idea about because it hadn't been released yet, which was all, you know, really lovely. Um, <laughs> and it was nice then to go to the premiere and um, Charlotte Ritchie uh, was at the premiere with Simon. Um, so it was delightful, you know, it was nice to say hello to her again. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a really nice feeling when things things are connected yeah you know um and you work on one thing and people from that you know go on to other things and you work with people again or you meet people you know and that's just how it work goes you know uh, when you've been doing it for 20 odd years uh now uh you know you meet people and um hopefully your paths cross again and after a period of time you know it, it invariably does yeah, you, you'll all be rolling around. You'll be you'll be playing King Lear at some point or another, and uh, you 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 know you'll run into everybody at some point. <laughs> oh, I, I still like to think I've got my boyish good looks. Oh, I see. Right, so, hopefully not for a few years. I, it was. Oh. Uh, I I can't remember. Somebody said to me. I, I I mentioned that I wanted to play Hamlet, and they said, "No, you're too old for Hamlet now." I, I was like, "No, I'm, I I can't be in that stage where I can only play kings." I was I was I was boyish princes before. It's I feel too. <laughs> I've, I've made the crossover into uh, Claudius or nothing. Well, listen, uh, if, Ian McKellen, if Ian McKellen can do it, I'm sure you can. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll come up with some uh, amazing reason why you need a, a, a slightly balding radio presenter. Um, it's been lovely to talk to you again. Um, and uh, we, now I, we, we, you've, you've chosen the last piece of music for us uh, and you've gone for the untouchables. And I've I've made you promise that you can only spend a maximum of, of two minutes telling me why Morricone is, is, is absolutely what we need to be listening to, because well, I, I, I get the feeling you could have just taken up the whole show. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd happily, happily do so, but obviously uh, people might get a bit bored of that. Um, right. Well, you, when you talk about soundtrack, you, I mean, we've mentioned Bernard Herrmann, obviously, who I adore. A lot of those 1940s composers that came from Europe into the, you know, uh, post-war, um, uh, one during the war, pre-war, um, Hollywood system are fantastic. But Morricone, I don't know, his tunes just resonate with me and he's written so many great... I mean, I'm a huge Western fan. Mm. So the Dollars trilogy, I mean, uh, to me, are perfect. And so he's done that once upon a time in the West. And then, uh, you know, he's moved on to things like The Untouchables and The Mission and Once Upon a Time in America. So he worked a lot with Sergio Leone. But then one of my favourite things that he did was um, the soundtrack to The Thing by John Carpenter. Oh, wow. I, so I John never realised that at all. 
John Carpenter famously writes a lot of his own soundtracks, mm. and, and which I love as well. But Ennio Morricone wrote the soundtrack to The Thing in the style of John Carpenter. <laughs> so if you ever listen to the soundtrack to The Thing, I mean, it's fantastic. It's brilliant. The but equivalent yeah, of with... John Williams going, you know what, I'm going to do an Alan Silvestri piece for you now. I think oh, that <laughs> it's a nice little tribute. But yeah, The Untouchables, um, I mean, it's a cracking movie. Brian De Palma, Costner, Garcia, um, Sean Connery. I was going to say you uh, missed Connery out of that. List. And of course, Robert De Niro, <laughs> you know. Uh, Rob, <laughs> yeah, Sean yeah. Connery playing an Irish police officer in Chicago with a Scottish accent. Just after he'd played the Spanish king. So that's that, that's perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, we'll play that to, uh, to, to finish uh, this evening. So thank you very much, David, for joining us. Um, we'll look forward to uh, reviewing uh, the, uh, the Phantom of the Open in a couple of weeks' time. And, Please do. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for you up on the big screen in the future. <laughs> Thanks very much for having me.